Hello, welcome everybody. I hope you're enjoying the talks you've been at so far. Uh, so we have here uh, Ricardo Magliocchetti, and he's going to talk about TFW, Your Country Funds Open Source Development. Let's give him a round of applause, please. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. So my name is Riccardo Magliocchetti, and today I'd like to talk about the feeling uh, when your country funds open source development. So a bit my, about myself. I'm a Pythonist, of course, a software developer and consultant from Italy. And uh, in my free time, I'm an open source software contributor. Uh, most of my time spent on free software, I contribute to the MicroWSGI or UWSGI project. And so uh, what I'd like to talk to you about today, so last year uh, I consulted for uh, the Italian Digital Transformation Team, which is a unit of the Italian government uh, tasked uh, with making public services uh, uh, more accessible to businesses and uh, uh, citizens. So uh, it's like uh, a unit of the government uh, tasked with fixing the public Italian public administration uh, digital culture, which is more or less like the government digital service you have here, but possibly with a lot less budget. A lot less budget. So uh, I worked on the Docs Italia team with uh, these people. You may recognize uh, maybe Jacopo, which is a Django CMS contributor. Maybe so, someone else, someone like Francesco working in London, so maybe you met him. And uh, with these people, uh, we built Docs Italia, which is a platform to host and share uh, documentation uh, made by the public administration. So. Uh, public administration, like uh, the state, but municipalities, regions, can upload uh, their documents so they can share with the public. So Python, this of course, it's a project within Python. So a Python platform towards documentation, you may recognize some pattern, you, and maybe you, <laughs> You recognize it because you already use Read the Docs, and in fact, uh, Docs Italia is a fork of Read the Docs. Uh, Read the Docs, uh, I think every one of you know it, but anyway, it's uh, the leading uh, documentation platform for Python projects. So most of the, of the time, you read the documentation for uh, Python libraries. You possibly are reading them on Read the Docs. So we actually forked with the docs, and uh, I mean that in the fork as in old school way, like it's not just uh, pressing GitHub fork button, but to cite Wikipedia, uh, we forked uh, with the docs as uh, we are creating a distinct software, like we of course press the fork button on GitHub, but we renamed the, the, our new repository, and uh, we are kind of created a different uh, developer community, community as, like, as we are like a regional project like for Italy. Uh, our community speaks mostly Italian. And so we like, like uh, different rules, uh, different uh, issues, and different documentation in other language. And if you are old enough to remember all times, like forking projects was is possibly was uh, quite not the right thing to do. But still, so why a fork? Actually, so we have to fork, uh, and we cannot just use uh, like install our instance of the docs because uh, we have very specific target. Uh, we accept contribution only from uh, public administration uh, uh, people, so just a random citizen cannot upload the document. And uh, we, so uh, we created a quite different onboarding process to check that. And uh, we created a metadata system to make uh, this um, contribution from uh, public administration uh, people like easier. So 
we created a YAML format to add to our repository so our machinery can uh, uh, see uh, documentation and people don't have to upload them uh, manually. So in this uh, work, uh, fortunately, uh, we managed to contribute quite a bit stuff upstream. And uh, we did uh, 30 people request and uh, 22 got merged uh, and uh, 11 uh, closed. Possibly not very good ideas. On these uh, 22 pull requests uh, merged, uh, 10 were bug fixes, which uh, were fixes to like back st stack traces we got on our center instance. And uh, six were uh, internationalization uh, improvement. We, of course, contributed a fully talent translation, but we like fixed. Uh, the um, <coughs> tooling uh, used by Read the Docs to upload and manage uh, translations. And uh, doing that, we uh, found some strings were, uh, were not marked for, marked for translation. And six were just uh, code cleanups, so nothing interesting. So we, uh, by, well, I managed to contribute a regression to Read the Docs. And I removed the schema from a URL, URL from a template. And this uh, change broke uh, some JavaScript. And the fun thing is um, the change was not needed, and it was a wrong uh, configuration from our side. So we contributed not only changes to the Redux docs uh, code base, but we uh, contributed a full uh, Ansible deployment automation. And Read the docs is quite a complex project. Uh, you have uh, web workers, you have salary workers to build uh, the actual documentation. You have an um, Elasticsearch cluster for doing the search. And uh, you, of course, you have an Nginx front end. So it's like a, usually a multi-machine uh, setup. Uh, and so having it automated is way better than uh, following instruction on wiki, I guess. And we managed to contribute zero new features. And uh, if any of you maintain an open source project, I think this is appreciated, as uh, we haven't asked the Reader Docs developers to maintain our code, essentially. Well, uh, we tried to contribute a uh, feature. Uh, at the time, uh, Read the Docs was using a very old Deluxe Search uh, version for the search uh, feature. And it was like a 1.3 uh, Elasticsearch, so it was quite kind of old. And uh, there was a pull request uh, unfinished to port it to Elasticsearch uh, 5. And we tried to update uh, this pull request uh, to add support for Elasticsearch uh, 5.6. But uh, nobody in the team was very, um, <coughs> um, nobody mastered uh, Elasticsearch. So it took a while. We made mistakes, and our code was not that great. So by the time uh, we were confident with, with, with our code, uh, as a Google Summer of Codes uh, student uh, started from scratch to support Elasticsearch uh, 6, which was the latest release at the time. And so we dropped our effort. And um, fortunately, uh, it took quite a bit to the student uh, too. Uh, but uh, this January, last January, uh, Read the docs was using this new Elasticsearch uh, 6 code. So during this process, this six months of work, for me at least, uh, some uh, lessons uh, were learned, I think. First one, uh, it's important to build trust with uh, upstream as uh, try to be part of a community, as in contribute fixes, uh, comments, help uh, the people. Because one day uh, you'll need help for, from the developers, and it's a lot better to be recognized instead of being a nobody. Second thing I learned is uh, a fork is nothing more than a long-lived branch. 
And uh, if you maintain some code, you may know that uh, maintaining a long-lived branch is a kind of painful because you have to keep up to date when the code you forked uh, the other branch uh, is updated. And so the better to fix upstream instead of carrying patches downstream. <clears throat> and another thing I learned, but always I know it already, uh, like contributing to open source software is just part of the job. These days, uh, it's quite rare, but you'll have a software project without reusing uh, open source software. So if this software is part of your stack, you have to contribute, as the software won't write itself. And then, uh, last lesson is uh, convenience is um, <coughs> a lot more important than purity when maintaining a fork. So you have to sacrifice the better design for uh, the convenient one. And uh, for example, uh, read the docs is a Django application. So instead of modifying the original uh, code, we created a new Django reusable application. <coughs> so we can add our code there. And uh, to be more precise, for example, uh, we had to add, of course, some models, so some database table. And was, uh, the decision was to create another model instead of changing the original one, because otherwise we had to maintain uh, a handle conflicts on database model, which, of course, it's not something you want to do. And uh, th thankfully, uh, the Read the Docs code base uh, provides uh, quite a lot of configuration, like not just knobs for settings, but uh, there's a lot of entry point to override uh, some uh, the class to use for an implementation just by specifying a uh, ver path. So a lot less code to change and fork. Last lesson actually is uh, when you have to sync with a stream, so you have to merge back uh, the changes as the upstream continued development. Uh, you have two choices, usually. The one is to merge changes on your branch, and the other one is to rebase your changes on top of a stream. And my opinion is that uh, rebase always better, as maybe it's more painful uh, for the first time, and you possibly have to manage conflict uh, in a big way and, um, the, the, when you rebase. But still, uh, your history will be a lot cleaner. And uh, having a cleaner history uh, would be better not only for you to handle your commit and see what's exactly different. But also, it's easier if you want to contribute to cherry pick uh, commits uh, because we are atomic, as uh, the conflicts are already resolved in the same commit. So you have less work to do. And still, uh, it possibly easier also for a stream to see what you've changed. And if I find something interesting, we can cherry pick. So to conclude, uh, not all project forks are bad. And uh, ours uh, isn't bad, not just because we made it open source, but because we contributed back to the upstream community some code, some fixes. And uh, like the important thing is, like. When you make something open source, good chances that it's not really helpful for other people. And uh, so the important thing is to serve the bigger community, in this case, the Read the Docs one. And also another thing I want to point out is uh, you still can deliver value while contributing to open source. like. We, I'm telling you about a project run by uh, Italian public administration, which is not exactly the, uh, an elite uh, example of uh, working, so a working habit or, <coughs> or so. And so I think if we managed uh, to deliver a value while contributing to open source during a uh, public uh, 
administration project, I think you can do the same from your company's uh, company project, uh, private project, whatever. So this is all I got. Uh, thank you. Uh, you can find my contacts and also references to the Italian government uh, GitHub uh, account on GitHub. Mine, uh, the speaker deck where I leave my slides, my Twitter handle, uh, my site, and thank you. So we have time for questions. Does anybody want to ask a question, please? We're there. Thank you very much for the talk. Uh, well, this is probably a question that will spark a whole new talk. But could you uh, give more detail about how was how did the project start? Like, did the Italian public administration select what language or what technology you had to use, or they gave like? They assemble a team of people, and then you have like more freedom to mm. choose. Like, how is this working out? Are the users like actually submitting documents uh, uh, to the system? Okay. So um, the the decision to use Redux was already made because the um, like the unit, the Italian digital transformation team was at the time like I think uh, 20 people and uh, we were uh, mostly technologists so and uh, some people were Pythonistas so of course they already knew read the docs and so it was like a kind of natural uh, solution for our problem and um, you know, the, the, the need for a platform for documentation, uh, I, I have to say I don't know where it came from, but uh, the, the, the thing was that uh, we, we wanted a platform where we can see the difference between documents and where, where we can uh, search the documents and where we can discuss the documents. So uh, there is an integration um, uh, like a Sphinx plugin to integrate uh, the rendered documents with a uh, discourse forum. So the, the idea was that uh, you can dis discuss the specific uh, like regulation or laws, whatever, on the forum. And you can see what was people discussing on the rendered documents. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody has other question? Yeah, there. Hi, uh, very informative talk. Uh, what I wanted to ask was, what do you thought were the difference in funding levels as a factor between, let's say, gov.uk and Docs Italians? Uh, sorry, but my understanding of British English. Uh, you, <laughs> sa you said uh, the funding levels between gov.uk and Docs ah, Italia were okay. quite different. Oh. So can you give me a scale or a number? Oh, or no, I, I think it was mostly a, a joke. <laughs> but no, like, uh, again, the, at the time, uh, the digital transformation team uh, was like 20 people. And I think the digital government, government digital service, like, a lot more, like 100, I think, at least. Uh, so I think it's kind of that kind of scale. Like, I think the budget for the Italian was like a couple of millions a year, which I think is not that great. But uh, I don't have the details on, on budgeting. <laughs> well, 20 to 100 developers is a lot of money and a lot of resources. So yeah, I guess it gives a bit of the scale. Uh, do we have any other question? Whoa, they're turning me around. Thank you for the talk. So uh, my question isn't really about read the docs. Uh, it's more of a, well, I guess, organizational question. So uh, all of the government documents that are posted on Docs Italia, I guess that they're versioned through some sort of system, right? Uh, is every single revision of a given document available to the public? And uh, if so, can members of the public uh, choose to edit these documents? 
or propose new changes to these documents? Okay, well, uh, Docs Italia ideally will contain all the public administration documents, but at the moment, uh, not many um, administration have started to contribute uh, documents there. And um, the publisher uh, can decide to make uh, some revision public or not. <coughs> so the, the, the workflow usually is uh, by publish uh, and uh, revise the document uh, in uh, private mode. And uh, when they are like, they fine with the document, they make it public. And uh, the same for revision. So they probably work uh, and then publish a new release when we are fine. But uh, the documents we <coughs> added to the platform are public, taken from GitHub. So everything should be public. I mean, not like built and rendered, but the source code are uh, always public. Uh, regarding taking into account uh, like um, making edit possible from other people, I think it depends, but most of uh, the documents, I think, are like laws or regulations. So I think uh, they want to have comments on the forum, but not like people editing uh, the documents themselves. OK, thank you. I saw before another question. Yeah. Hey, hi. Thanks Hello. for the talk. Um, I just had a, a question regarding, you know, you said the fork and then most of the new branch is in Italian language and it's differently organized. And I just was wondering how that impacted um, the support of the user community in Italy, like, you know, having a different language and, you know, the, the local language, if there was any impact in terms of people providing more support or anything like that. Uh... I like our users uh, at the time uh, were just like power users. So were, was people like very interested in the project. And so usually they were like, kind of skilled. So the platform itself uh, didn't have much support uh, issues. But still uh, the, the, the problem uh, is like, uh, convincing administration to spend time on writing their documents. So a lot of time was spent like creating um, um, Pandoc pl plugins to uh, convert uh, like um, documents in ODT or doc format in uh, restructured text. So most of the work uh, uh, was done uh, ahead of, of uh, publishing on the platform. So I think most of the work for support is like, how should I write my documents to be uh, on the platform? And but uh, like I worked only on the Python side, so I can't have uh, details on that. But I think for us, it was like um, no, no, no support issues to, from our users. Yeah, uh, so we have now run out of times. <laughs> So if you have any more questions or anything, I guess he will be around. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, um, personally, I have had done a fork, and yeah, I know what you're talking about. So I think this is very useful advice that you gave. So thank you so much for your talk. Thank you.